My name is Andreas Schneider. Um, I'm the Samba maintainer at Red Hat and I'm a Samba core team member since 2010. Um, in my spare time, I'm also working on several other projects like a SSH library, um, testing frameworks and a raw photo developer. But let's start with the talk. So the abstract in short, um, Samba's command line user interface and design principles fade in and out of use according to some esoteric pattern. <clears throat> that abstract was shamelessly stolen from a Samba XP talk um, by Douglas uh, in 2019. And the title was, what should we do with our user interface? Darkness described the Samba's uh, command line UI as kind of haphazard um, with patchy abstractions and untested as a user interface. He claimed that nobody can fix it um, because experts are locked in, newbies are baffled, and old options can't be dropped. Well, I tried to fix it as good as possible. So the questions I try to answer in this talk are, what are the current problems uh, we, we, discuss, uh, we face? Um, how did we solve the issues? How do we prevent issues in future? Um, what can still be improved? And has the documentation been updated? So let's start with what are the current problems and a few examples. So one of the most used options is probably the one for uh, turning on Kerberos. Um, and let's look at two examples here. So SMB client uses dash K without an argument, if you look at the help and LDB search uses dash K with an argument, um, which is yes or no. So you need to remember which tool needs an argument and which not, or look at the help uh, each time you want to use it. And for example, if you look at what uh, dash E in LDB edit does, then you see that option is there twice and you don't know will I enable encryption or will I open an editor or both. So without trying it, we won't find it out just from inspecting the help. <clears throat> so what about capital S? Will I get signing? or sort the attributes with this option? And why do I have signing twice? So what actually is triggering that option? And if we look at the dash S parameter, we again have two options. One is uh, for scope, which is probably used very often in LBDB search, but also config file. So will I set the scope or set an smb.conf location using this option? Or do I set the scope to the config file? So, okay, if I want to use the scope now, um, then I can say, okay, let's use the long version of it. So not the dash s, but the dash dash scope. But, Let's check the LDBC search for scope. And well, as you can see, it's there twice. So we again, don't know what scope we are setting here. So can we fix this? So fixing consistency across tools will create new problems. We need to introduce new options. The complexity might increase 
and probably user scripts are breaking when we do that. So we have backwards compatibility dilemma. Another problem is locking. So do Samba tools lock to STD out or STDR by default? And do all lock do all lock to the same output by default? And with locking, we are again at breaking user scripts because the output might be parsed um, by by scripts. And if we are changing um, the locking, if it's going to STDR or STD out, then probably we will break again user scripts. And yeah, if you look at SMB client, then SMB client locks to STD out by default. Um, SMBD locks to STDR by default. So we have a difference here. And <clears throat> it's completely random across tools. So you cannot say these tools are probably locking me here and the others um, to the other. Um, at least some provide an option to change the default output, but some don't. So what are the problems discovered so far? <clears throat> um, so there is no consistency, consistency in locking to STD out or STDR. Uh, we have several command line parsing implementations. Um, that's why we have often different options provided. And we have a lot of duplicate options. Um, some tools have more, some tools don't have duplicates. So it, it depends on the tool you are using. How did we solve these issues? For the tools written in C, we have a complete rewrite of the command line parser. The number of command line parser implementations in C has been reduced to just one, and the parser uses the client credentials API for all tools now, um, which also has several benefits, um, especially for developers. So let's look at the most important common options, <clears throat> which is available in the most of the tools. And there is a new option now, which is called use Kerberos, and you can set it to desired, required, or off. That is also already language we are using for certain smb.conf options. So that's why we are using them here too. Um, yeah, so the wording is already in use. And there is also an option use cup 5 Ccache that you can define which Ccache you want to use <clears throat> uh, instead of providing uh, a username and a password. If you already, so if you did a, a K in it before and already have a, a credential cache, you can define it with this option now. So for use Kerberos, there is a corresponding smb.conf option, which has been added um, so that you can change the default of it. So shortly, we need to talk about FIPS mode. So what is FIPS? FIPS is also, so FIPS is a standard for security requirements for cryptographic modules by the US government. And it is currently also the main driver be behind that work. Um, so we have a big effort at Red Hat uh, for this. And um, <clears throat> that's why I dived into this and, and, and fixed this stuff. So uh, there is often the term FIPS 142. What is it? Um, this is the current applied standard and FIPS 143 will then supersede it. Um, and what does it mean? So this standard only allows a subset of strong crypto algorithms for security relevant functionality. And what does this especially mean for Samba? So RC4 and MV5 are not available. And the result is that NTLM doesn't work 
only Kerberos is working, as, which then means again, SMB doesn't, SMB1 doesn't really work and SMB guest chairs don't work because uh, they are requiring um, NTLM and as RC4 and MD5 are not available and NTLM is based on, on them, we are not able to use it. You can only use Kerberos. False. You can, <clears throat> so in FIPS mode, Kerberos is or will be required for uh, authentication. And in FIPS mode, um, we are setting or we are enforcing it to be required by default. And as we learned, beside Kerberos, SMB doesn't offer any secure authentication methods in FIPS mode. That's the reason for it. So for legacy support, the dash K option um, or those dash K options are kept as a legacy option for now. They come with a big deprecation warning and they will be removed in future. Um, so user scripts should be adopted as soon as possible um, as the options will go away at one point. So another new common option is the client protection with uh, sign, encrypt, and off as the arguments. Um, <clears throat> also, a, a corresponding smb.conf option has been added that you can change the default of it. For example, if you want to force uh, to use always encryption, you can set it in, as an smb.conf option and if you use it on the command line client, uh, on the command line then it will override the option um, this client protection option will do the right thing for you so it will iso sign or encrypt smb or dc erpc connections so um, whether you are using smb client or rpc client or something else it will make sure that um, yeah, it is either signed or encrypted. And because of this new option, client protection, um, the option encrypt has been removed and also the signing option has been removed. So if you look at logging, <clears throat> all tools log to, to SDDR or standard error by default now and it can be changed using the debug std out option. And as it is a common option, it is available across all the tools. <clears throat> so for the demons, SMBD, WinBind D, and NMBD, this means that lock std out uh, option has been removed. And um, the common option debug std out is used for that now. So for debugging, all tools are providing leak report to enable telloc re leak reporting on exit um, and also leak report full to enable full telloc leak reporting on exit. Um, this was available for some tools. Now all of them are providing that, which makes it easier for um, developers to debug it, but also for users if uh, developers requesting these information. <clears throat> so for reporting bugs um, in this area, you can now just create a Telegram report and attach it to the bug report. Yeah, several tool options have changed like dash S has been removed uh, to avoid a conflict with scope. Um, here in the Andreas, uh, you are muted. Hello. 
Yeah, we can hear you again. Okay. Did you hear this one, or where where did it stop? Uh, about the first one on this slide. Okay, for LDB modify, the dash s has been removed to avoid a conflict with the scope option, and dash e has been uh, removed in LDB modify uh, for the editor option. So dash s is um, often it's re used really often for these tools. So we wanted to keep the dash s. Um, and for setting the config file, you need to use the long option now. Yeah, so check the SAMBA 4.15 release notes for more details as soon as it will be released. Um, all the changes of options are documented there. Um, So other issues resolved. Um, <clears throat> we have a tool called WinExec to execute commands on Windows remotely. And with the new command line parser, um, Kerberos support is fully working in the tool now. So there was a bug report that it isn't, isn't working. And as I moved WinExec also to use the new common command line parser, this just started working. So this work is really a big code cleanup. Uh, it gets rid of a lot of global variables, especially in SMB client. And as mentioned before, it uses the credentials API now, um, which is a common API used in Samba. Um, and that will also make several things easier in the future as underlying code is already using this API and we always uh, just used, created um, such an object from the, from the options which has been passed in instead of starting to use that from the beginning. So how do we prevent issues in future? So this new command line parser has a sanity checker. And the sanity checker walks over all short and long options and is looking for duplicates. And here you see an example what happens if the sanity checker finds a duplicate. So it will print the option and will it will also exit with an error. Um, but the sanity checking is currently only enabled in developer mode. Um, so that we as a developer see these things um, and find these things um, pretty early. And we, I haven't turned it on for production to not break um, any binary that it just exits uh, when you want to run it. The new command line parser is covered with unit tests too. Um, and this way the common parser is always sanity checked with this unit test um, and make sure that we do not introduce duplicate options in the common parser. But what can still be improved? So we could add tests which executes the dash dash help option of each binary we have in Samba, at least as a start to avoid duplicates uh, in all tools and futures. So we don't have something like this uh, yet. I don't know if Douglas looked into uh, doing that or maybe has some code already when he looked uh, into the issues two years ago. We could also extend this further to compare the dash dash help output with the corresponding man page. This would make sure that all the options are documented in the man page too. Um, and well, help with this would be appreciated if someone already looked into it. <clears throat> also, there is uh, yeah, an updated documentation. So we should make sure that 
binaries with same options have the same meaning. For example, where, where bus should increase the output and the help output should be consistent uh, for options which are reused in, in several uh, binaries. Um, and if you look at the Verbas example, as you can see, we could do better here. Um, so we have the same short and long option, but the help output is, is different and probably it should be the same in each binary to be consistent. Yeah, and we can could do much better for more options. The same applies to quiet and uh, several others like out for output, outputting to a file or something like that. Um, some of them are the same, but the documentation is completely different for all of them. And that could be made consistent at least. So has the documentation been updated? Yes, it has. So all existing man pages have been updated for the common command line parser options. Um, so there is, there are more or less for docu documentation, there are entities which describe all the options. And then in the man pages for the tools, um, we I can, or we can just call these entities um, with, with the options which it provides. So I, we went through all of the man pages and updated them accordingly. Um, so they reflect the common command line parser options. Um, and also the wording has been improved, um, especially for new options to make it clearer what it is doing and also updated um, because some, some of the options or the descriptions were for really, really old Windows versions like Windows 95. And I don't think that's really in use anymore. So if you find issues in the documentation with the next, uh, after the next release, please open bug reports and we will try to um, fix them. So to answer the question from the abstract, will we get shell completion one day? Maybe. And maybe someone could look into that. Um, it's also a task how to contribute to Samba, I guess. Um, and yeah, everybody is welcome to help us to get to this point. So thank you very much for listening. And now questions and answers. So one question is what about CLI option compatibility with previous releases? Um, as I said, the, the dash K option for Kerberos, that's the only legacy option which has been kept. Um, for others, um, we really needed to remove um, at least the short options um, in order to not run into duplicates and you need to break some of these options, um, especially in the LDB tools, like for um, <clears throat> dash E for encryption and also for editor in order to make sure that if someone looks at the help, I know what it, is, what it does and stands for. So yes, we, we have some breakage here, but at least the most important option, which is the dash K has been kept. Do you have um, a list of changes 
I don't see in the current master in what's new, the uh, list of changes for the parameters. I think we need to have one in the uh, what's, what's new.txt. Yes, um, I already updated the what's new.txt, but this is not upstream yet. So um, in total, it's a 150, uh, 150 patches and Andrew complained that reviewing 150 patches at once is a little bit too big. So I started to break it in parts and we are, I guess, at part three now and probably it's will be split in six or seven parts. Um, and the last commit is the what's new update. So okay, thank this you. update is currently only in my development branch and not in mm -hmm. master yet. The, the other question is rough a suggestion. I guess you, you thought about this already. You asked this about, can we have the uh, shell completion? Uh, with the um, checker for options that you wrote, you effectively have access to all the options in the tool. So technically you could write a generator that creates the completion uh, itself. Mm -hmm. And then it would mean that the completion can be generated when you build Samba and can be part of the release and maintained automatically as, as far as we can. Okay. Yeah, then that's a good idea. Um, and we could implement something like that, maybe. Have you thought about um, putting the documentation entities closer to the common code? Could you, um, would that be useful to try and keep them connected to each other? So that like the C code maybe spits out that entities file so that we've got um, a bit more alignment, um, seeing we've, we've got to the point of having a really very nice common set of command line parsers. You could try and keep the documentation closer to it. Uh, no, so this is just some, I've just looked briefly into this stuff and there is an entity, a Samba entities file, which is loaded into every man page we are generating. Mm -hmm. um, and I updated this one, um, but I didn't look into splitting it up um, further and maybe moving this around because all the documentation is in the docs XML code. And I'm not sure if it makes sense to move some parts to the actual code. Maybe mm. we could do that in future. Um, I have one question. Um, when looking at very small binaries, I Right now I'm kind of looking at splitting up Samba into several binaries. Um, some significant startup costs come from um, having us to load like tens of shared libraries. And now with this command line parser, we, I, I found that um, we kind of depend on, on a lot of shared libraries. Um, is, I, I, and I haven't really looked deeply yet. Um, is there a way to, a sane way to just have a simple set of libraries that we link to. If we, for example, have a tool like SMB control that only uses messaging, this will never ask for Kerberos or something like that. Uh, then we probably have to split up the command line parser into several libraries so that um, it does not rely on the uh, credentials API. So that you have one implementation with which doesn't use the credentials API and one which does. But uh, depends on what parts as and beat on control uh, needs. I don't, I think it will just use setting the debug level and something like that. And then maybe we could do that, yes. Because I mean, it's if, if you just start up as in B control, 
it's in the order of like 100 milliseconds just to load the short libraries. And that, that's a lot on a fast system. Alternatively, uh, you could load dynamically uh, modules as needed instead of uh, thinking against them. Yeah, but probably as beat control doesn't do any network traffic, so it doesn't uh, require the uh, um, these things. Yeah, we could. So currently, everything relies on um, the credentials API, and that's probably why it pulls in Kerberos and that stuff. So we would need to find a way to not um, use the credentials API just for this parser for this binary. OK, thanks. This probably is needed for test parm uh, stuff like <clears throat> as well, which doesn't really need to talk to network uh, itself. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But apart from that, many thanks to tackle this task. I mean, this has been a pain forever. And nobody dare touch it so far. Uh, yes, it's, as I said, it's um, the main driver was FIPS boat. One thing is uh, to make the user experience better for if you are uh, on a machine which is in FIPS mode, so that all the tools are behaving correctly and use Keros by default. And the other thing is that I'm actually able to write tests uh, in FIPS mode, um, especially with the Keros stuff and the client protection stuff that will make it much easier to implement tests now to verify that we are working correctly in FIPS mode. Yeah, I, I likewise really appreciate the uh, the work you've done. Um, I'm sorry, I missed a lot of the talk on my Zoom client. Um, I ate my browser. Uh, <laughs> but it uh, was really good to to be working with you on reviewing these and, the, and getting the, um, and just seeing the credentials API get used. I know it has a lot of its problems, but it's really awesome uh, to get, you know, to to see, to see to see the credential stuff being sent to, in the kind of directions I was always hoping it would go. Um, it also needs much cleanup, and uh, as has been mentioned, some of the issues with it. Um, but it's lovely seeing some of those goals of um, consistent. Hey, I'd like I'd like protection on this connection. You know, being presented to the user in a way that moved away from some of the mistakes we made with where we said I want SMB signing. No, I'd like integrity. You know the the. So the, 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 the subtle moves you've made in that direction have been really awesome to see. Uh, and the great, the great thing is it's all Douglas's fault for saying it couldn't be done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we need to clean up the credentials API. Um, there are several functions which return void and they yeah, actually should I, I, return I, I, I deeply apologize. Yeah. Uh, for, for about a year, we th this strange notion that we shouldn't bother checking for memory out of memory because it couldn't happen on Linux pervaded a bit of the code that Tridge and I were writing. Um, that was a mistake. Um, and unfortunately, Credentials API uh, existed in exactly that moment. Um, actually, it may not even have been Tridge. It might have been entirely my own uh, thing. But uh, yeah, I, I do apologize for that um, misfeature. And... Um... One of the next probably bit, big task, which is not easy, is to get rid of the machine account pending state. <laughs> oh yes, that um, that is entirely tied up in the um, was entirely tied up with the past com uh, credential command line behavior. The idea of 
needing to be able to put the machine account flag on there and not have the SME.conf already set up and, and not know where the databases were. So that's what, that's what was behind that. Um, but I could, yeah, I agree. It's a, um, <laughs> a strange beast. Yeah. So this is, it's not needed um, anymore as you in, in, in the PO parser, you have pre and post mm. um, ex execution. And that's why you do not really need this option. Um, at all. So Metze has some code and try to get rid of it. But as soon as you try to remove it, then as in BD itself stops working. <laughs> there is some strange behavior in, or not as in BD, the, the summer ADC daemon is relying on it. But we haven't figured out how maybe this is, this will work now to get, that we get, get rid of it with Metze's patch set. Hmm. 